Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, you guys, I am jumping on and I told you that yesterday when I did that live last night when that incredible storm cloud was producing so much lightning. That was so incredible. So I hope you guys were really blessed by that and the word that the Lord wanted you to receive. And I told you that I would be giving an update on something. And so I'm going to actually talk about that right now. And the title of this broadcast, hey Liz, the title of this broadcast is chapter, is actually John chapter 4 verse 34, where Jesus said, my food is to do the will of the Father who sent me and to finish his work. And I'm going to wait just a few minutes just so Facebook can send out a couple notifications so you guys can jump on and hear this live. And But I know that those of you that jump on the replay, you get the same thing. So praise God. But um, if you guys remember um, when I did a live broadcast and on our deep dive Wednesday night, that was two weeks ago, and the message from the Lord was on radical obedience. And the Lord was speaking about how he was going to bring us to a place where he was going to cause us to step out with radical obedience in the very place that we felt weak, that we felt too old, that we felt too much time has gone by. There's a desire in our heart and we just don't feel that we're able to step into it. And the Lord said, you know, that is something that I put in your heart and you're going to step out because it's what I'm calling you to do in my strength with radical obedience. So I know I got several comments on that message from the father where he said, you know what? You didn't miss the boat because I never called you to get in the boat. I called you to walk on the water with me in radical obedience, which means to move by his spirit. And so on that on that broadcast I shared with you how the Lord said to me, "Daughter, you are going to step into a water fast the way that I called you to 18 years ago when I branded you my handmaiden to travail for the nations, to begin to cause you to wail and travail, going into deep intercession for the nations, preparing you for the ministry, preparing you for what I have destined you to do for my glory in birthing and establishing my kingdom in the earth. So I wanted to tell you that when the Lord has me say something or share something with you, I do what God has called me to do. And I wanted to give you this update and tell you guys that, my goodness, it takes supernatural strength from the Lord when he calls us to do anything. And I am literally on day 18. This has not been easy, but the reason God called me to step into this water fast is because it is all about restoring his priesthood in the church, restoring his priesthood. And you know that the priesthood, these are the deep wailers. These are the intercessors. These are the ones that go before the Lord on their face, interceding, partnering with the Holy Spirit for birthing revival, real revival, bringing nations, bringing a people into a covenant made by fire. This is holy, and God is restoring that priesthood in his church where the church ended up establishing this man-made tradition, man-made doctrine, church culture, instead of Christ culture. I'm not even going to say kingdom culture. I'm going to say Christ culture. And so the Lord 
He called me. Anytime he calls you into something that you can never do in your own strength, it is absolutely to birth something out of heaven. It is absolutely to establish or advance his kingdom in the earth. And so I wanted you guys to know, and thank you for those of you who have been truly praying, because the purpose of this is absolutely for the priesthood. It is to bring the, what I call the killer whales back into the church. And I'm telling you, this is so serious because I remember, and some of you know that I do prophetic cadences, which is releasing the ancient sound from heaven, from the throne room, where the angels of the Lord surround the Lord. They surround the throne. They begin to worship 24 seven, beholding the Lord in a completely new light, just completely worshiping the Lord. And so they release these melodies and sounds from heaven. There's an incredible symphony that begins to break ground in the earth. And so the prophetic song that came out of my spirit in 2021 was, I am releasing my killer whales, for it is time for my wailing women and my wailing men my God, if you are a man of God, let me tell you something. The church culture has screwed this thing up and made you believe that it's women who are intercessors and travailers. No, 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 no. It is men and women. And the spirit of God began to speak out of my mouth. And he said, it is time for my wailing women and my wailing men to return to the four walls of the house of God again. And so he said, I'm releasing my killer whales and the killer whale, the travail of the spirit of God through the remnant of God is to devour the flesh, to devour the traditions of man, to restore the leadership of the Holy Spirit in the church. And so, so this is the purpose of this fast. And so I have 12 days remaining, and this is but by the Spirit, not by my might, not by my power, but by the Spirit of the living God. And so I'm telling you that, again, this is also for this school of intercession, my Naval Aviation Flight School, that is going to be absolutely life changing to those of you that have been marked by God to truly come forth into your priesthood and become that intercessor. The word intercessor has been so tainted, just like the word, the glory of God. There are so many things that have been so tainted in the culture of the, in the church culture. And so God is restoring. He's restoring the true nature and the true definition of an intercessor of the glory of God. I mean, he's restoring this in the church because it has absolutely been a joke. It has been a joke in the church where people think, oh, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. My God, that is an intercession. Woo! And so also I want to say something because this is serious. This is serious. The Lord, the Lord, the other day I was, I was just, just, I was pacing my living room floor and my God intercession came out of me, tongues of fire. And I began to open my mouth and the spirit of God said, no more Ichabod. There will be the true Kabod, the Kadosh from the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And so God is going after that Ichabod, uh-huh, the one that's been hiding and creeping around and slithering around in the flipping church. The Ichabod, the fool, the, what do they call it? Fool's gold. And I heard this in the spirit so, so loud and clear. No more Ichabod for the true Kabod. And in some translations in Hebrew, it says Kabod, Kabod. 
and and God is it, because he's restoring his priesthood. He is not playing around. God is moving strategically. And so as I was releasing those tongues of fire, my God, the spirit of God was moving in this way. And so the Lord began to say to me, um, and, and some people, okay, and, and listen, I love, I love, listen, I love everybody. I will never bring judgment. I will never bring judgment upon a person. That's the Holy Spirit's job. But I will bring judgment on a system. You better believe it. Uh huh. I will bring judgment. I will judge a system or a structure that was not built by the Holy Spirit nor the hand of God that holds many captive, that holds many stagnant. They're stable. They're stalled. Like what I said many years ago, like horses. They're stalled. They're pasteurized. They're fenced in when they were born to run. They're forerunners. They were born to move and advance. And God is, he's sick and tired of what's been going on in the church culture. And so here's something that I want to, I want to say, and this is why the Lord had me title this John chapter three, or chapter, th I can't even, my God, excuse me, John chapter four, verse 34, when Jesus said, my food, and I want you to hear me because I, I don't want to offend anybody, okay? But my purpose, and, and someone said this to me, my, my friend Marty Swanson, you guys know Marty Swanson, he is so awesome. I love Marty and his wife, Lori. And, and Marty, Marty was prophesying the other day and he goes, Kelly, he said, you are God's sledgehammer. You are such a freaking fierce warrior. You go in there and you smash and you tear down what needs to be smashed and tear down. And so I'm about to do that right now. And, and, and glory to God. It's the spirit of God in me, right? It's not Kelly, but it is the spirit of God. And so, the, the Lord said this to me. He said, you know, I need you to tell my people, okay, just like the word, just like my word glory has been tainted and, and Luke and, and watered down. Thank you, Jesus. Watered down. Okay. Oh my God. The word fasting has been watered down. And I'm going to say this. This is serious. Okay. Because fasting in the Bible, okay, is literally and only about abstaining from food. Not abstaining from social media, not abstaining from entertainment or friends. No, that's the church culture. The church culture just says, well, you just need to not do things that you normally do. That's, you know, something that, you know, you, 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 you focus on. No, fasting. God's definition of fasting is not eating food, period. They want to water down fasting. Oh, do you think in the biblical days that when those people God called to fast, a nation to fast, my God, that they were like, well, we're just not going to do this. No, they they abstained from food. They, they, they put dirt and ash. They, they put dirt on their faces. They put their face on the ground. They began to cry out to God for their nation. Okay. Fasting has nothing to do with what these doggone leaders and pastors. Are. Well, you know, we're just going to go on a little fast and we're, 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 we're just going to, you know, just, just don't get on a social media fast. They call it a fast. Social media is not a, is not a godly fast. I'm sorry, but I'm speaking the truth. It is literally when your physical body cannot eat food, period. That is a sacrifice. Okay. Not something that you take pleasure in. Oh, that's, a, that's something I like. So if I don't do that, I'm just, I'm entering a fast. No. The scripture in Isaiah 58, really breaks down fasting, okay? And it's powerful. God is causing his remnant to merge on what the Holy Spirit told me is called the fast track. The, the fast track, which means, again, you guys hear me say this repetitively. It is removing your plate 
for your kingdom mandate. And I'm going to say it again. True fasting is removing your plate for your kingdom mandate. That's why in John chapter 4, verse 34, why do you think Jesus said, my food, my food is to do the will of my father who sent me and to finish his work. Jesus made it plain. My food. See, fasting is, is removing that physical food, the pleasure of eating, because food tastes good. Food tastes good. But you know what? What did God say? Taste and see that I am good. Taste and see that I, the Lord, am good. I want you to make me your food. Your, I'm your daily bread. I'm your daily bread. I season you. I want you to taste. Woo! Taste. Taste and see that I, the Lord, am good. Man, that word taste right now, this is burning in my back. Taste. Jesus said to his disciples, when they said, man, we, we, we were trying to cast out the demon, nothing happened. He said, this comes through prayer and fasting. And what Jesus was actually saying, and I believe in another translation, he was saying, this comes through intercession. Intercession. Okay, you can't do this, but you can only do this through my spirit. This comes through intercession and fasting. Whoo, God. And I believe it. I'm, I'm seeing, I want to, I haven't read any comments yet, but I'm, I'm reading because I can see something like, wow, this is confirmation. This is confirmation. I felt that the Lord was saying to me, this would be confirming to several of you that you're about to emerge on the fast track, meaning God is about to take you in and it's by his spirit. Okay. It is with his supernatural strength. It is by his spirit. Because I'm going to actually be teaching. I'm going to do a course, like a, a a course. Yeah, like, and you know how how I say the creator's kitchen. I'm going to give you at the father's table. I'm going to serve you the main course, okay? And it's called the fast track. And I'm going to break this thing down because what's going to happen is it's going to give you a hunger and a desire to embrace a fasting lifestyle. Because fasting will discipline you. It will discipline you. My God, it'll cultivate, it'll cu cultivate, it'll cultivate discipline where the Holy Spirit deeply disciples you. Fasting will cause you to fully depend on the strength of the Lord, on the manna from heaven. Fasting will do this, okay? Fasting will cause any type of deliverance that we need, any type of healing in our soul. Fasting is so powerful, but fasting will cause you to also cultivate a consistency and a full commitment to your calling. Fasting is not about you getting breakthrough with finances. Fasting isn't about you getting even physical healings. I'm just going to say that's through the blood of Christ. Jesus paid the price on the cross for your healing. Jesus paid the price on the cross for those things. But I'm telling you, fasting is absolutely going to cultivate a disciplined lifestyle so that you will be aligned with your calling and what God has literally marked you by his blood to do in his kingdom my God. And I am, I'm telling you this with humility, humility. God even said, I think come a couple years ago and, and he's been speaking the same thing through several of his, of his sons in the earth, right? He said, we're going back to the future, back to the future. So God is beginning to integrate some of those things that you did all those years ago, and I feel the spirit of God in this thing, 
Things that you did 10 years ago, 12 years ago. For me, it was 18 years ago. I mean, throughout my life, yes, I've, I've had a fasting lifestyle. You guys knew last year in May, it was around this time last year that God told me to go on a juice fast. It was a jubilation journey. I couldn't have any fruit juice, nothing sweet. I had to have celery and cucumber and greens and, and, and lemon and ginger. It was, it was a, it was a very disciplined fast and it was for 50 days. It was intense. But it served a great purpose. That's what birthed the morning stretch. That's what began to birth what God wanted to establish and say, hey, this is going to go forth to deeply minister to my people because I'm stretching them. I'm stretching them. I'm enlarging their territory. My God. Who I need some, I need some of my water right now. So I'm, I'm telling you that, and I won't be long winded on this, but I'm telling you that, you know, when, when I tell you that I'm going to do something and God tells me to say, it, I do it. I am a doer of what the Lord tells me to do. And it's serious. And so, I mean, and this was a sacrifice. I mean, I got a, I got a bottle that like, <laughs> I call it my, my dad used to, uh, years ago, he would chew tobacco. <clears throat> Ugh, yuck. Okay. <laughs> but I'm, I had to spit in this bottle for the past two weeks. I had to spit because I had, you know, stuff coming out of the body and, and my God, it wasn't pleasant. Okay. But when you go in, in a water fast, I'm telling you, this has to be ordained by God. So you don't do, and let me say this, this is important. Okay. When you are stepping into a fast, it's because you're led by the Holy Spirit. Just like how Jesus, right? He was led into the wilderness, led by the Spirit. So you're led by the Spirit. You'll, you'll know it. You'll know it by the Spirit when God says, hey, I'm calling you. God may call you into a three-day fast. God may call you into a, a seven-day fast. God may call you. Now, I'm a seasoned, I would, I'll say I'm a seasoned veteran. So since, you know, 2002, 2003, God pulled me into that and he cultivated that fasting lifestyle in my life. And so, those things begin to happen throughout the year. So, you know, the reason God has led me is because I'm seasoned in this. And the Lord said 30 days for me, which I have 12 days left. Oh my God. <laughs> but he, it was significant. It's just, it has a significant purpose. God speaks through numbers. And what, what's amazing to me is the number 30. And I'll read it to you real quick. Cause it really, I, I wept. I was like, cause I said, Lord, you know, how many days, what are you, what are you asking me to do? And so he literally said 30 and he told me to look it up. And it says part of the meaning of the number 30 comes from the symbolizing dedication to a particular task or calling. It came from Aaron's bloodline. Okay. When, when God called, said Aaron is, is the priest, right? When, when that rod budded from the tribes of Israel, it budded from Aaron's rod. And it says that this was about dedication, entering priesthood. And it talked about those who, you know, come into that physical and mental, spiritual maturity, and they can handle major responsibilities. So entering your priesthood is being able to, by the Spirit, handle major responsibilities. Taking your calling seriously. My God. And it says this. Now, this, this is interesting. It says, John the Baptist, who was of priestly descent, it says his mother was a descendant of the daughters of Aaron. I never knew that. John the Baptist, he was of priestly descent. So one of Aaron's daughters, my good, look at this, his mother, John the Baptist's mother was a descendant of the daughters of Aaron. And his father was a priest. And it says, he began his ministry at the age of 30. And then it says, Christ began to publicly preach the gospel. His ministry lasted for three and one half years. Okay, so, so this is all about entering priesthood. So this, this, this fast is all about interceding for the remnant, interceding for those specific ones who are marked to really enter true priesthood. Okay. 
entering true priesthood. And you, I mean, th this lifestyle is laying on your face, is partnering with the Holy Spirit. I mean, there are so many historical events that took place in nations because one who was marked by God laid on their face and interceded, interceded, partnered with the Holy Spirit, interceded, and God moved mighty, okay? Fasting is powerful. Understanding what priesthood is is serious. And again, that word priesthood has been tainted in the church culture, Seriously. So my responsibility is to make sure that's restored to its rightful language that people understand what God is really saying, what the Spirit of God is really saying about his royal priesthood. What are the duties of a pre of, of priesthood? And remember, and I'll say this lastly and then I'll jump off. What are the duties of the royal priesthood? God said. I've had enough of the church culture establishing a neighborhood. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Coffee shops and all the books and all the wonderful, you know, bling bling in the church. And everybody's sitting there and just coming in like, oh yeah, we expect. Everything is so traditional. The people expect it. That should never happen. Everybody expects it. Oh, we come in the church. Okay, we got to wait because the worship team is going to get up and they're going to play three songs. And then the pastor's going to get up and ask for an offering. And then the pastor's going to preach a word and they're going to have a five or 10 minute altar call and then church is over. And we get to shake hands and we get to go to the coffee shop and purchase merchandise and leave. And yay! No! I'm telling you, God is so serious about tearing down this type of, you shouldn't have, you shouldn't expect the same thing all the time. No, it should be coming in and having an unknown, like, oh my God, we're, we're about to step into an unknown experience with the spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit's going to come and maybe, man, the, the people, the pastors are going to lay on their face. God is about to move and he's about to pour out his spirit. You, I mean, we should not have a church culture where everybody just expects the same doggone thing. No, no. Okay. That's the Ichabod. Ichabod, right? What does that mean? The glory of God departed. Departed. Because the Holy Spirit's the conductor, but these people in the church want to be the conduct, the conductor. They want to run everything. Okay, so I'm done for now, praise God. And um, I will be posting um, when I'm going to, I'm going to go live tomorrow at five because it's Wednesday, right? God told me I may do weekly and he may have me do bi-weekly. So of course this, this time tomorrow would be bi-weekly but I'm gonna post what the message is gonna be about and I praise God for how he's gonna move. I love you guys. I pray this message blessed you and I pray the spirit of God really begins to stir in your heart where he is literally leading you. He's wooing you by his spirit into, onto his fast track. Glory to God. Because those of you, you're about to enter that. Why? Because he's gonna, he's gonna cause you to intercede for the church. He's gonna cause you to really come into your priesthood. Okay. And this is what Naval Aviation Flight School is all about. Man, it, it's going to, it's going to be deep, 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 deep. Okay. You know how I roll with the Holy Spirit. I love you guys. Shalom. And I will see you tomorrow at 5, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time.